All right, that was the ears. Osteomyelitis, bones. Uh, in human medicine, staph is the primary pathogen. In veterinary medicine, we typically are dealing with mixed infections. Uh, staph can be a component, but we see gram negatives, and about 30% of our osteomyelitis have obligate anaerobic components in addition to other uh, aerobes and facultative anaerobes. So unless you prove by culture that it doesn't have an obligate anaerobe, you must provide activity against it. So we typically start with four quadrant coverage. And again, uh, clavamox or sofoxetin, um, both good anaerobic activity and four quadrant yeah, you're, you're not getting your, your um, gram-negative aerobes or facultative anaerobes in high numbers. You're going to miss 30%, depending on who you read, 30 to 50%, but it's acceptable. Um, why not go with something just huge, a big gun right off the bat? Well, one, you may not need it. That's why you do the culture and sensitivity, and you're wasting a really big gun. Uh, and spending a lot of money where you could have gotten by otherwise. But a lot of these things are open initially, they have draining tracks, and it's not uncommon to have to come back and change antibiotics based on failure. So I don't tend to use my uh, uh, really big guns first time. I base it off culture and sensitivity. But uh, these are good. Uh, other things, uh, surgeons like cephalosporins in orthopedics. I think that's a little holdover from the human side where they're dealing with staph so much. But you've got several cephalosporins. You've got clindamycin for staph. And a fluoroquinolone if you think, uh, and arguably, if you're not using four quadrant otherwise, then you could come in with enrofloxacin and unison or enorfloxus and clindamycin uh, for that. Now, uh, we are again seeing really bad, bad resistance, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I had two cases surgery asked me about last week, and there was nothing on the susceptibility panel that was susceptible. All right, everything was R, okay. I think there was one I on doxycycline, but we never have reached those concentrations to treat. We, we wound up using lenizolid, which I'll talk to you about. But one way that uh, is fairly common now on these is, if we've, uh, is to use really intense local therapy, all right? We do that in two ways. In small animals, we'll use antibiotic impregnated uh, polymethyl methacrylate beads. And this is just the fancy name for acrylic. All right, so it comes as a powder, like Bondo, uh, and you pour the activating solvent into it. It makes a paste. And while it's still a paste, we have these uh, uh, Teflon-coated molds that we put the paste into. And usually we put a little piece of suture material, non-absorbable suture material to connect the beads. So these solidify and you've got uh, this acrylic with ultra high antibiotic concentrations in them. So you go in surgically and when you're debriding out the dead bone, and, and by the way, if there's sequestra, meaning dead bone, you have to remove that. It's nearly impossible to uh, successfully cure an osteomyelitis if you have sequester present. So if you've got dead devitalized bone, when you go in, you're gonna curette all that out, but we'll pack that area with these uh, PMMA beads. And those will leach antibiotics into that general uh, area in very, very high concentrations. And probably the most commonly used would be one of the uh, aminoglycosides but cefazolin and metronidazole, uh, we've used meropenem, all sorts of things like this uh, are very effective. Uh, <clears throat> so now, ideally, you go in and you retrieve these. These are not absorbable. One of the things they, there are a few surgeons that will use plaster of Paris impregnated beads. 
because they will absorb over time, but generally that's uncommon. Uh, the reason you go in and, and retrieve these is if you <coughs> don't cure the infection, they can develop biofilms and form anitis. All right. So if you cure the infection, yes, you can leave them, but more commonly we try to go in and retrieve them. Okay. So that's uh, local bead therapy. One thing done more in large animals and limbs, this is IV regional is, a, is for treating uh, limbs. Uh, but here you see a boxer that we're, we're doing it on. Uh, this is where you anesthetize the animal. You put a tourniquet up high on the leg above wherever your infection is. And then you put a catheter in a peripheral vein you drain as much blood out of it as you can, so you get as much blood out of that leg below the tourniquet as you can, and then you infuse your antibiotic solution into that vein as uh, much as you can get. And again, this is very concentrated antibiotic. Uh, and it goes retrograde, it goes backward through the vein, probably destroying the valves as it goes, but it goes retrograde through the veins probably into the uh, um, medullary uh, part of the bone, into the uh, bone marrow, and then diffuses out. And they've shown you can get really, really high concentrations in bone and septic arthritis with IV regional antibiotics. Uh, this is a boxer that had a multi-resistant staph septic arthritis secondary to a um, um, anterior cruciate surgery that got infected. Uh, here we're doing IV regional amicacin on him. We use lenizolid as well uh, systemically. So those are both things and you do this for several days. So about once a day for three days or so you go in and you do IV regional antibiotics. Alright, so that's one way we have of addressing some of these uh, problem osteomyelitis.